Uh, my name is Li Ping, and I am a senior attorney of Landesa, an international land policy and law institute, uh, uh, advocating tenure security for the world's poorest people. Uh, my name is Li Ping, mm -hmm. and uh, I am the senior attorney of Landesa, mm -hmm. an international land policy and law institute, uh, headquartered in Seattle. But I am based in Beijing and uh, working on China and from China. We are an organization uh, consisting of primarily lawyers, public interest lawyers, advancing tenure security for the world's poorest people. And uh, that's our mission. And uh, in China, uh, we pretty much focus on uh, helping the Chinese government or Chinese legislators in policy makings and law makings to have uh, the uh, pro-farmer laws and the policies that will strengthen their tenure security and well including the tenure security for, for their forest land rights. Well we are doing the uh, work advancing the tenure security for world's farmers. Well in China and uh, as everyone knows, uh, China is a country, is a centralized country. And unlike in India, where the, the land issues are state issues, in China this is a national issue. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much working with uh, the central government agencies, the policy and the legal agencies, trying to get a good policy and laws. The, uh, the several features in China. One is a centralized country. Second is a big country. And as a small organization like us, we definitely will not be able to reach every corner of China. It's impossible for us. So the best and the most effective way is to influence the central policy making and the law making. And once the government, the central government, promulgates good policies and laws that favors or strengthens the tenure security for farmers, and I, I think that the, the, the farmers all throughout the country will be able to benefit from it. So that's why uh, our work pretty much focuses at the central level, basically advising the central government on legal drafting and the policy uh, formulation and providing the research materials, research reports, as well as uh, international comparative research and the field work reports, all these type of things to the central government and have conduct meetings with the central government agencies and you know, trying to uh, influence this policy making process. And uh, which includes the, the, just like uh, our work uh, for RRI, that's uh, the, the, uh, also follow this type of format. Basically, we work for RRI, and whenever we got a project from RRI, RRI is also an organization, you know that, uh, focusing on the uh, improving the institutional changes, institutional reforms in China that will, they will move, they enhance the farmer's tenure security. So uh, we also follow the traditional way, our way to do the, to do the RI work and work with the RI to influence the central policy makers. Over the past 20 years or so, and a lot of farmers just uh, moved to cities as a kind of a migrant workers. However, we have to keep in mind, land is not only the production means for farmers, it's also the most valuable assets that a farmer can have. Currently, if you look at the, uh, because the land land rights, including the forest land rights, are legally defined as property rights in China under the existing law. So that land rights, including forest land rights, are the property of farmers. So 
when they, if they want to move to the cities, and uh, they definitely could transfer that land out through whatever means, and uh, get the money, and then to facilitate their livelihood in the cities. Secondly, if well, farmers, you know that they do not have, in the, the, there's a very high probability that they will not be able to survive in the cities. After a while, look, you know, they could do that and they found out it's not a kind of right place for them. And then they can always move back to the, to the, uh, uh, to their, to, to the countryside and uh, survive on their land rights. So that is why we emphasize on securing the farmer's land rights. Now to take the farmer's land rights back whenever the farmer wants to move to the cities. So if the farmers wants to transfer the land route, that's fine. That's the, 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 their voluntary choice. But, based, but according to our research, most of the farmers uh, who are doing the, uh, the so, uh, non-agricultural jobs in the cities maintain their land rights in their hometown, in their countryside. They do not want to give up that land. What, what I find interesting is China is known, you know, the, some of the history that, of China that's taught here is the collectivization mm -hmm. of especially the farms and, and how it's evolved now over the past few decades to mm -hmm. that there is land rights because that reflects individual ownership. Mm -hmm. How did that take place and how? Mm -hmm. ha how solid are those rights and have they, how have they been? Oh, okay, good. That's a very good question. That's a kind of academic also. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain that in a kind of a non-academic way. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know that when Chinese government, when Chinese Communist Party took power in 1949, mm -hmm. the first law they promulgated after 1949 was the land reform law, which giving the farmers a private ownership of land. Uh, of course, that land was confiscated from the landlords and uh, distributed to farmers in a kind of a very egalitarian way without charge. But Mao Zedong took the farmers' land back and formed that a collective, farm, <laughs> formed that a collective farming system in 1956, 55, 56. And then that system lasted until early 1980s when Deng Xiaoping came to power. He decollectivized the Chinese agriculture by allocating collectively owned land. If you can run through again, the, just briefly, okay. the history. Oh, briefly. And, and uh, when the, uh, the uh, in 1980s, early 1980s, Deng, when King, uh, Deng Xiaoping came back to power, he collectivized the Chinese agriculture by allocating collectively owned land into the hands of uh, farmers. It's called the land rights, mm -hmm. the use rights to the land, to collectively own land. So currently the Chinese land, <coughs> I'm sorry, collectively own land, still collectively own. However, the use rights to that land is completely privatized. Mm -hmm. So I look at individual households for uh, farmland for 30 years. Forest land is for 70 years. And these rights are defined as property rights, a private property, and uh, with a range of the protection laws, you know, laws that are protecting such kind of uh, rights. And, and how, in working with RRI, is, <coughs> does that help you work with the government in protecting those rights? Mm -hmm. uh, well, for a long period of time, the Chinese government focus pretty much on farmland. And we, our work was also focused on the farmland. 
RI came to China and uh, fill up this uh, huge gap on the, that means forest land. For instance, in, uh, as I said earlier, the China started that land reform in 1980s, mm -hmm. but not touch on the forest land. So the forest land reform was conducted on the, uh, in 2000s. And when RI came to China and helping, of course, uh, through all kinds of uh, vehicles like uh, research with us and also advocacy with the uh, Chinese foreign administration, the, the forest administrations to promote this tenure reform and uh, to individualize or communitize or to put the, the land rights into the hands of the farmers. So, uh, which was quite successful. And uh, RI, uh, you can see that, well now the, the, uh, they have a very good uh, the, uh, the, uh, relationship with the Chinese foreign administrations and uh, conveyed all of uh, the policy recommendations, of course the recommendations, including recommendation comes from us, uh, to the uh, policy makers on forest tenure. And uh, if you look at the China's current forest reform policies, you can see a lot of, a lot of uh, the, the uh, footprint of RI. And uh, for instance, like uh, securing the farmer's forest land tenure. And, uh, and also, you know, so sort of place some of the restrictions against the uh, restrictions on the uh, large scale forest land acquisition, the so called land rush. The Chinese government, the uh, forest ministry, uh, the uh, people promulgate such kind of policies, mm -hmm. restricting non-farmer acquisition of forest land rights. So all these things you can see the footprints of, of RI. Is that okay? We're out of time though. Okay. Um, can I just ask for one more thing? Sure. Um, actually two things. First of all, um, can we just have you on, uh, on, on film here just saying that you give us permission to use your interview for RRI's purposes? Sure. Okay. No Good. problem. Sure. We just mm -hmm. need your permission. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, I was wondering if you could just, in the very beginning, we asked you to say your name and that you're from China. Uh, no, so I'm. And my name is uh, my name is Li Ping, of course, and, okay. and also that I'm working for as a senior attorney for for Landesa. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on China and in China, of course, I'm from. <laughs> okay. On the um, Chinese issues, yeah. Okay. Um, would you mind just? For just so we can have it, just because in the beginning there was some noise, could you introduce yourself again, just one more time, so we can have that? Oh, okay, no problem. Looking at Dan, if we could. Thank you.